Hello everyone! As of the 1.19.4 update, changes made to horse breeding mean that it's now possible to pretty easily breed the perfect horse. Because I recently spent a bunch of time doing exactly that in my survival world, learning a ton along the way, I thought I'd share some useful tips and tricks. First off, what is the perfect horse? Horses have a few different stats, but the ones you can maximize are speed, jump height, and health. Now, what determines these? When a horse is first spawned, it generates with random values within a certain range for each of these. These translate into the values you see here. A maximum of 15 hearts, a top speed of 14.23 meters per second, and a little over 5 and 1 quarter blocks for jump height. So, how does horse breeding work now? When two horses are bred together, the offspring stats will be within a certain range based on the parent stats. As you can see by this bell curve, it's more likely that the foal will be an average of its parents, with decreasing chances for it to have stats that exceed or are worse than those of its parents. Even though there's a very slight chance for two parents to produce a superior offspring, there is a chance nonetheless, and I found that, with enough time and golden carrots, it was possible to breed a horse with fully maxed out stats. So, what are my tips for doing that? First off, you've got to find a way to measure your horse's stats. If you have access to the command line, it's as easy as going up to a horse, typing slash data get entity, then selecting this random string that represents whatever you're looking at. You'll be able to see all of this horse's data, and you can look for the sections that say jump strength, movement speed, and max health. If you don't have access to commands, there are mods you can use that show this data. I personally like Lightmatica. There's an option in the settings menu to toggle the horse speed and jump height readouts. After you tame an adult horse, that information will show up in the top left hand corner. Now, if you're looking for a more vanilla way to measure your horse's speed, there are devices out there that can help with that. Shameless plug I guess, but I think my own horse speed tester is the easiest and the most accurate device out there. So it utilizes a hopper minecart on top of an activator rail that gets powered and unpowered as horses enter and leave the track. Items move into a hopper minecart at a much greater speed than they move into a regular hopper or than droppers can dispense items, meaning you get a much more accurate idea of how fast your horse is. And since the fastest horse is about 55 sticks, uh, measured using this device, I've noticed that even a few sticks of difference just feels like so much faster or slower. So if you want to get to breeding the perfect horse faster, I think it really helps to have the most accurate device that one can build. Now, if you want to measure horse jump height, the easiest way to do that is to put increasing snow level layers on poles that are also of increasing levels of height, with some alternating rows of carpet between them, and that will give you every fractional value of 16 for a single block, so you can just go through and you can see what the highest pole a horse can jump over is, and that will give you a pretty good idea of the horse's jump height. Tip number two, punch your horse to measure health. Yes, that is correct. Some horses actually have a secret half heart of health because the data values for health range from 15 to 30, and that number divided by two is the number of hearts they have. So if a horse has an odd number for max health, that means they have an extra half heart. You can test this by punching a horse. If they still appear to be at full health, they have that extra half heart. If not, no secret health. Now, the maximum possible is 15 hearts with no secret half heart, but if you're trying to breed the perfect horse, you'll get there faster if you breed horses with the best possible stats, so it's worth it to know if they have that extra health or not. Tip number three, start with the best stock you can find. I think this goes without saying, you'll get to the perfect horse faster if you start breeding with better horses. I think it's worth it to travel around a bit, looking for the best horses you can find. Don't sweat it if you can't find anything that great though, it doesn't take that long to start breeding better horses. Tip number 4. 
don't bother building a stable first. I made the mistake of putting a lot of effort into designing and building a big stable in my survival world, thinking that I'd do all of my breeding here. I quickly realized it was just too difficult to stay organized that way, and my stable got way too full almost immediately. Instead, just use fence posts based one block apart. You can attach the horses with leads and use signs to keep track of what horses have what values. If you don't have very many leads, you can just dig a 2x2 two two hole for each horse and put a sign above showing their stats. Tip number 5. Get your supplies before you start breeding. You'll need a good amount of golden carrots as well as a few stacks of signs. I found it was also useful to have a villager crop farm that was replenished by a self-sustaining bone meal farm. Now, one of these villagers is fully cured, so I can take the wheat this farm outputs, and I can come up here and I can trade this wheat for emeralds, which I can trade for golden carrots. And I was able to use this to do the massive amount of horse breeding that was necessary to get a maxed out horse. Now, in addition to golden carrots, you may want to have a few other types of food, which brings me to... Tip number six, breed faster with food. There are six varieties of food that can help you grow or tame horses faster. Those foods are sugar, wheat, apples, golden carrots, golden apples, and hay bales. Each will reduce the amount of time it takes for a horse to grow up and how difficult it will be to tame that horse. If you can choose between any of these food sources for speeding up a foal's growth time, I recommend using golden carrots or golden apples, as they have the additional effect of reducing the amount of time it takes to tame them once they grow up, so you can get to measuring their stats and breeding the next generation faster. Tip number seven. If you want a horse of a particular color and pattern, find such a horse for your initial breeding. Though so these were the parent horses that I started with, and though I did find there were occasional mutations in coat color and pattern, they weren't really that common, and I only ever seemed to really get this um, coat pattern and none of the other ones. It also took a very long time to get different coat colors, and I found that I really hated one of them. So if you want anything in particular, I would say just make sure that your gene pool begins with what you want. Tip number eight breed a dozen horses. So I found in most of my rounds of breeding that I had to breed about a dozen horses from a certain number of parents before I got maybe two to four horses that exceeded their parents' stats. And I found that it was almost always like the very last ones that I bred that were better than their parents. So if you've bred a bunch and they don't seem very good, don't get frustrated, just keep going. Tip number nine, focus on speed and jump height. There are much larger variations in possible speed and jump height, and it takes a lot more effort to get those two maxed out. You'll have an easier time if you focus on those two first and then try to bring your horse's health up once you get some high value horses, as it's pretty difficult to try to bring up all three at once. Tip number 10. Do not breed horses that have opposing extremes. So what I mean by that is you're going to wind up with horses that are, say, really fast, but they're really poor jumpers, or just they have, you know, one really good stat and one really poor stat. So it's actually not worth it to breed them because the ensuing offspring is just kind of usually winds up being below average in everything and just ends up kind of dragging the averages um, down in your current gene pool. So I have found that it's better to get horses that are slightly above average than their parents to, than to breed that one horse that has a really extreme statistic and you'll progress faster that way. Tip number 11, call your herd. So you're going to end up with a lot of horses, and I do mean a lot of horses, and if you want to chuck them all in a nice retirement field somewhere, good for you, you're a better person than, than I am. 
But if you don't want them lagging up your world, I suggest you build a little drop chute like this. Get over the chute, of course. Right there, perfect. And down they go. That drop chute is deep enough for you to not hear the horrible sounds that horses make when they die. Now, you can put some lava at the bottom so they die automatically, or you can put your looting sword in your offhand, and then you can shoot them with a bow. And I have this set of hoppers at the bottom that goes into an automatic dispenser that will shoot the items into a bubble column, and I completely failed to kill this guy. So, all of the drops will automatically get sent up the bubble column and then I can go up to this stair here and I can grab those drops. Because if you're breeding that many horses, I guess you might as well get all of the leather back and it saves you the effort of having to manually take the saddle off every single time you need to get rid of a horse. So yeah, I know it seems kind of mean, but the horses can run fast in horsey heaven. And now for my final piece of advice, except that the perfect horse is perhaps not literally perfect. So I bred a bunch of horses in my survival world and I got a few who were capable of jumping over like five and a quarter blocks. They were measuring at 54 or 55 sticks in my little system, which is the best possible. And they all had like 15 hearts. And I thought, I've done it. I made the perfect horse. And then I opened up Lightmatica and I realized that they were not in fact perfect and they were pretty much like 0.2 or 0.1 off in terms of speed. But here in my creative backup of my world, I generated the perfect horse using commands and I found that they didn't really feel that different from the literal perfect horse. So my advice to you is if you are trying to breed the perfect horse, except that perhaps the perfect horse is not the one that has really fully maxed out stats. Because I would say that anything that can go faster than 14 meters per second is truly extraordinary. And 0.1 or 0.2 meters per second is barely noticeable. And I would say that even horses that are on the higher end of like 13 meters per second are also very good. Even though I would say you can feel a difference between those and anything that can go over 14. So I would say, you know, if you want to like keep breeding and keep trying to get that 14.23 meters per second horse, like go for it. Like good for you, I guess. However, I have tried to do that here in my creative world. Like I did a bunch of breeding, like even more than what you see down here. And I couldn't do it. Like, even with creative, with like all the golden carrots and all the time in the world, I couldn't do it. So, I... You might just have to accept that, you know, 14.1 meters per second is a good enough force. And like, don't kill yourself trying to get literal perfect stats. Okay, final piece of advice, for real this time. So as you get closer towards maxed out stats on the horses, you're going to find that getting better values gets harder and harder. So once you get horses towards like the 14 blocks range that can jump over five blocks, you're going to feel like you're actually regressing because you're going to get a lot that are like four block something jump height and then 13 point something meters per second and you're gonna get a lot of 14.5 hearts so if you feel discouraged and like you're going backwards just don't give up just keep breeding but yeah i noticed it definitely got harder as we got towards better and better horses so what you should do at this stage is like just breed, breed, breed all your horses as many as you can because basically the more you breed, the more chances are you'll get horses that are 
better than these ones here because I mean these are all really good so just get a bunch of horses and I mean some of these fools are gonna be like way worse than their parents but I mean it's you know sheer numbers here and some of them are going to be better so I mean just the best thing to do if you really want that perfect horse is just breed so so many horses but yeah, it's not really that easy to get the perfectly maxed out horse, even though it is possible in the game. So, even though you can do it, a really good horse is still a valuable commodity. Well, I think that's going to do it for the video today, folks. Now you can let me know in a comment how horse breeding is going for you and if these tips were actually useful. And if you liked the video, a rating would be much appreciated. If you want to see more Minecraft content, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye.